Belize coast, mangrove forests, lagoons, and gentle brush strokes of land fringe the Caribbean Sea. And beneath the surface, an equally captivating marine ecosystem with a mesmerizing abundance of undersea life. Ancient. Graceful. It feels incredible to be in the water with the spotted eagle rays. And fearsome. Lots of sharks, and as I came over the reef, it came swimming straight for me. Swimming with a barracuda, it feels pretty intimidating. Yeah, diving with barracudas is sometimes scarier than diving with sharks. A magical place where the surreal is real and the otherworldly right in front of you. It's just thrilling to be out there and be a part of it. The place Charles Darwin called the most remarkable reef in the West Indies. Barrier Reef, ranging as far as 25 miles off the Belizean mainland on Central America's Atlantic coast. The largest barrier reef in the Northern Hemisphere, second only to Australia's Great Barrier Reef. It is home to more than 500 species of fish and over 100 types of hard and soft coral. These coral are some of the most fascinating living creatures on the planet. You see the corals and the sea fans and the sponges blowing in the current, and it's just an incredible place to be. You feel very free underwater, and just seeing the movement of everything, feeling weightless underwater while you're diving, and looking at the incredible life that is seen in the waters here in Belize. It's just thrilling to be out there and be a part of it. Over the centuries, tube coral, elkhorn coral, and brain coral have helped build the foundation of life here. Some deep sea colonies are estimated to be 4,000 years old. About one quarter of all known ocean species depend on reefs like this for food and for shelter. Yet incredibly, reefs make up less than 1% of the ocean. Ancient and integral, they are the rainforests of the sea. A place where astonishing creatures thrive and survive. One of the most captivating is the spotted eagle ray. It feels incredible to be in the water with the spotted eagle rays. They're large, they're beautiful, they're graceful. They move so fluidly underwater and just being next to them while they're moving in their slow rhythmic area kind of puts you in that special place and you could be right there next to them.
at a weight of up to 500 pounds, this flying leopard of the sea is far from the largest of the stingray family. But their 11-foot wingspan is equal to the world's largest bird, the wandering albatross. The spotted eagle ray has a long, poisonous whip tail used to defend against predators. Failing that, they use size and speed and are able to jump clean out of the water to evade attack. Eagle rays are well armed for hunting small prey, using flat plate-like teeth to crush hard-shelled crustaceans. But these are gentle creatures and run-ins with humans are purely accidental. The same can't be said for the great barracuda. Swimming with a barracuda, you know, it feels pretty intimidating, especially looking at them and seeing their teeth. I guess that's for most of the divers and snorkelers. You know, it's nice seeing a barracuda and feeling like the rush from them and their aggressive looking look. Seven feet long, weighing as much as 100 pounds. These ferocious predators are like missiles cutting through the water at speeds of up to 25 miles an hour. Targets are struck with two rows of razor sharp teeth, a technique that has served this species well for the last 50 million years. The Barracuda did not achieve this astounding level of success by being Mr. Nice Guy. A reputation that invokes great fascination and fear among divers. Barracudas do have the tendency to go for things that, that shine, like a metal or something like that. And there's been many reports of people diving with either earrings or, or, or wedding rings uh, and things like that, where barracudas did in fact, attack them, uh, bite a finger off, bite a ear off. So um, yeah, diving with barracudas is sometimes scarier than diving with sharks. Fortunately for divers, human flesh is not the first choice of the barracuda. There's plenty of food on the reef, if they can find it. The trumpet fish is a truly bizarre creature. Floating, drifting, and rotating. It changes color and blends in with the coral. The trumpet fish almost becomes invisible among pillar coral. Predators can't see it and neither can its prey. Small, unsuspecting fish are unceremoniously vacuumed up into its elongated snout. A proficient predator, but certainly not the only one in these waters. The peacock flounder, like a common flatfish, but from another planet. It has the incredible ability to match the color and texture of its surroundings within seconds. The peacock flounder has an elongated pectoral fin that is used in mating rituals. During courtship, both males and females display the fin upright to initiate reproduction in true peacock fashion. The peacock flounder has evolved with both eyes on one side of its body. Each moves independently from the other, providing the flounder 
with an incredible panoramic view of the ocean above. At the slightest glimpse of predator or prey, it simply vanishes. It is a handy trick, to be sure, especially when faced with one of the reef's top predators, the nurse shark. They're very shy, so when you approach them, they will swim away. Uh, we actually had one yesterday on the dive, and as I came over the reef, it came straight, swimming straight for me, um, right up in my face, and the next moment it just turned away. So it's not a dangerous shark to swim with, but it's a beautiful shark to see underwater. A shy hunter, deftly weaving along the ocean floor, it sucks just about anything it can into its strong jaws. The nurse shark has a boundless menu on the reef, crushing hard coral or shellfish, devouring squid, small fish, maybe even a peacock flounder, if it gets lucky. Unlike the peacock flounder, red lionfish are easy to spot on the reef. They're not supposed to be here, and yet they are everywhere. Lionfish are native to the Indo-Pacific region and were accidentally introduced into the Atlantic more than 20 years ago. Today, this invasive species has upset the natural order of the marine ecosystem from Texas to the Bahamas. For them, this strange and beautiful reef is like a 24-hour all-you-can-eat buffet. Here in the Atlantic, lionfish obliterate small species, steal food from larger species, and have no natural predators. But in their native environment, the Pacific Ocean, it is a far different story. Pacific groupers have learned to swallow the lionfish whole, head first, so its poisonous spines become folded back and disengaged. Cornet fish are also known to prey on the lionfish. Here in the Atlantic, these same evolutionary adaptations are yet to appear, and potential predators steer clear of these bright colors and venomous spines. For predators, learning how to hunt lionfish could take decades, if it's even possible. And there's no strong evidence to suggest that it is. Divers try to keep lionfish numbers down by spearing them whenever they can. Once we spear them, we injure them, and then the sharks comes along and they eat them because they, they can't defend themselves anymore. So what happens is the lionfish will usually swim upwards with its spines out, and the moment it's hurt or when it's dead, the spines go back and they can come from the front and they can eat them. In the meantime, there are other species that have developed a taste for lionfish, including the queen triggerfish. You'll find the queen triggers um, anywhere from shallow reef to three feet of water down to a hundred feet. And the queen triggers actually like to follow us because we feed them with lionfish. Defensively, queen triggers outsmart predators by slipping into small crevices. Then they actually lock themselves in by lodging a large spine on their backs into the rock. They won't budge until the coast is clear, staying close to the reef and often in close proximity to one of the open ocean's most amazing creatures. Mm -hmm. 
mates for life. Banded coral shrimp are usually found in pairs. Their crimson and white stripes are one of a kind. Their fur is actually made up of small spines used for self-defense. But incredibly, they go largely unused. Banded coral shrimp are far from the top of the food chain, almost as far as you can get. Yet they have no known predators. How? They earn their keep. These are cleaner shrimp, removing parasites, injured tissue, and leftover food particles from fish, such as the green moray eel. Even more amazing, the banded coral shrimp advertises its services. When hungry, it's been observed dancing to make itself visible to potential customers. For the large predators of the Belize Barrier Reef, the banded coral shrimp is more valuable alive than dead. Its satisfied customer, the green moray eel, is one of the reef's most stealthy and infamous predators, slithering from cave to cave, relying on its green coloring to blend into the coral and rock. Even at lengths of up to eight feet, the green moray eel is a hard to catch target. For predators such as the barracuda, it rarely leaves the tight quarters of the caves and holes in which it lies in wait for passing prey. The green moray has an astonishing ability to swallow entire prey whole without expanding its body. Most fish rely on suction to swallow prey whole, but this process makes the body of the predator expand significantly. It just can't be done in a small cave, unless you're a green moray eel. They catch their prey in their jaws, and incredibly, the prey is pulled down into the throat by a second jaw that launches out, clamps down, and pulls. No suction, no expansion, it's a sci-fi horror movie come to life. And a nightmare scenario that the French grunt would much rather avoid. Individually, just seven inches long, French grunts travel in large, beautiful schools. Though breathtaking, these schools have a practical purpose. Traveling in large groups increases the odds of survival during an attack. And if one fish finds a good feeding area, they all do. Come nightfall, the school splits up and individuals forage the ocean floor for small crustaceans. Swimming solo, they must be extra vigilant, for they are one of the tastiest fish on the reef. All the barracudas out there, even the dolphins, they love the grunts. You see them all around, and they make like grunt noise, actually, just like their name, so they go like It's one of the fish we found that the dolphins like because of their noise they make. The grunting noise is actually the sound of small jaws grinding together, though the reason for this remains unknown. While foraging the ocean floor at night, the French grunt may cross paths with another little noisemaker, the squirrel fish, known to make a staccato chattering sound not unlike that of their terrestrial namesake. They're actually called squirrelfish for a different reason. A 
third spine that juts straight up, like a squirrel's tail. Unlike French grunts, the purpose of squirrelfish sounds is known. One grunt is used when guarding territory, and when their eerily large eyes pick up on an approaching predator, a staccato noise sounds the alarm. But until that happens, the squirrelfish are free to feed. And one species they may try to take a bite from is the sea cucumber, one of the most common creatures in the sea, yet it is like something from another planet. Sea cucumbers are echinoderms, related to sea stars and sea urchins. They come in all shapes, sizes, and colors, from just one inch to more than six feet long. The sea cucumber is a popular menu item for predators, but surprisingly, it's no pushover. If threatened, it contracts, lightning fast, and shoots toxic internal organs at an attacker, only to quickly regenerate them later. Some sea cucumber species may discharge sticky threads to ensnare their enemies. These truly remarkable defense mechanisms may work on smaller fish looking for a quick bite, but not on the larger ones. The Southern Stingray. These diamond-shaped rays are expert bottom feeders reaching up to six feet in diameter and more than 200 pounds in weight. Like most rays, they're often found buried on the sea floor with just their eyes poking above the sand. The southern stingray avoids reef walls in rocky areas. Its hunting and hiding techniques are strongest on the sandy sea floor. To locate their target, they use acute senses of smell and touch. But they also have a sixth sense called electroreception. which means it can detect the natural electric currents given off by all living organisms. When prey is sensed hiding nearby, the ray sprays water out of its mouth, disturbs the sand with its wings, and flushes out its meal. The southern stingray's much smaller cousin is the yellow stingray. Round in shape, about the size of a tea saucer, these rays have a broader hunting ground than their larger relatives. Exploring rocky areas and coral reefs for food. But they use their most clever trick in the sand. When the yellow stingray senses nearby prey, it raises its snout to create a cozy looking nook for a small creature, luring them into what appears to be a safe harbor. Southern stingrays fall prey to larger fish, such as tiger sharks. They are able to avoid predators by hiding in the sand or exploding with quick bursts of speed.
Meanwhile, up above, one of the ocean's most majestic creatures, the hawksbill sea turtle, visits the reef for food. Sometimes they could be a little spooky if you kind of pull up on them suddenly, you know, they would get frightened and just take off. But generally, they're very, very friendly with divers. When they're feeding, they generally would just kind of like look up and go, oh, it's just a diver. Named for their bird-like beak, they are one of the smaller species of sea turtle growing to about 150 pounds. Hawksbills have a pair of claws on each flipper, something that sets them apart from other sea turtles. They are omnivores drawn to reefs, such as this one in Belize. Here, they feed mostly on invertebrates, like sponges, algae, or sometimes even fish. Hawksbills can be found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. And although populations are most dense here in the Caribbean, the hawksbill is listed as a critically endangered species. Its beautiful shell makes it a target for poachers who profit from the illegal sale of the tortoise shell used to make jewelry and other ornaments. Hawksbills are also susceptible to entanglement in gill nets and are caught accidentally on long fishing lines. The decline of the hawksbill is bad news for the Belize Barrier Reef. These ancient creatures remove sponges from the surface of the reef, allowing better feeding access for fish. Turtles are also an important element of the Belize ecotourism industry attracting divers eager to swim side by side with creatures that have roamed these oceans for the last 100 million years. Here on the reef, hawksbills often cross paths with their much larger cousins. The green sea turtle. Weighing as much as 500 pounds, They've been known to snack on sponges and jellyfish, but for the most part, these gentle giants are herbivores, feeding mainly on grass and algae. The pigment from this predominantly green diet colors their fat. This is how they earn their name. Like all species of sea turtle, they face incredible odds of survival. For every one to 200 eggs laid by a female, just 1% reach sexual maturity, which can take as long as 35 years. But the lucky few who make it can live to 80 years or more. These sea turtles have likely migrated thousands of miles to forage here from their breeding ground elsewhere in the Caribbean. They'll shuttle back and forth for their entire lifetime. Incredibly, every two or three years, female hawksbill and green sea turtles will return to the exact beach on which they hatched to lay their eggs. Long distance swimming is a part of their DNA. The ancestors of this ancient species once swam side by side with prehistoric creatures. The oldest known sea turtles date back about 150 million years, 85 million years before the dinosaurs became extinct. Just like the prehistoric giants, 
with whom they once shared the earth. Sea turtles are reptiles. They breathe air, but are able to hold their breath for unbelievable amounts of time. When resting or sleeping underwater, a sea turtle can go four to seven hours without surfacing. But the time is much shorter when the turtle is actively foraging. Quite possibly for seagrass, which can be a hard meal to catch, if it's in fact not seagrass at all. These are garden eels. The width of a straw, they are usually about 16 inches in length. But you're not likely to see that much of them. The garden eel uses its hard, pointy tail to burrow into the sandy sea floor. Slime on their skin cements the walls of the burrows, preventing cave-ins. Here they will stay for most of their lives, surviving on plankton that float by, continuing their expert imitation of billowing seagrass. Or simply vanishing. Also finding a home on the sandy bottom is one of the reef's most peculiar creatures, the cushion sea star. There are about 1,500 species of sea stars in the world's oceans, occupying the seabed, giving rise to questions such as, are they alive? Do they eat? The answers? They are alive, and they do eat. Using a remarkable adaptation, the sea star pushes its stomach outside of its body, lays it over a bed of coral, and waits, while its stomach acids and digestive juices break down the coral. The sea star then eats the defenseless nutrient-rich organisms inside the coral at its leisure. These insidious slow motion killers also threaten the coral reef. If left unchecked, they can consume vast amounts of coral, leaving a trail of devastation in their path. The yellow line arrow crab, on the other hand, usually leaves behind nothing more than a trail of excited reef divers. With its truly unique triangular head, framed by eight spider-like legs, it is always a popular photo op. These small crabs are nocturnal feeders and tend to scavenge the reefs for invertebrates. Moving nimbly around the reef is the smooth trunk fish. Dorsal and anal fins propel it forward while its tail acts as a rudder. They're not fast, but they don't need to be to snare the small plant and animal particles on which they feed. Occasionally, they blow at the sea floor to uncover hidden morsels. If bothered by a predator, such as the nurse shark, the smooth trunk fish does not need to flee. When touched, it secretes colorless toxins, fatal to predators, who are usually warned off by the bright colors of the potential prey. But not all colorful characters on the Belize Barrier Reef are afforded the same protection. The spotlight parrotfish has no such defense against predators, such as moray eels. Instead, it is quick, poking in and out of coral crevices and caves. 
These parrotfish use their beak-like jaw to bite off chunks of coral. Specialized teeth in the throat, designed for crushing, release the nutrients from algae in the coral itself. This ability to consume one of the most plentiful food sources in the reef is a powerful survival adaptation. But the spotlight parrotfish has an even stronger one. When population densities are low and breeding slows down, females can actually become males in order to help repopulate the species. This incredible transformation is brightly advertised as secondary males, as they're called, will change color from red and brown to bright blue. Here in the Belize Barrier Reef and on reefs around the globe, shimmering creatures glide weightlessly through rocky coral. Angelfish. Like most of its saltwater cousins, this French angelfish can reach lengths of two feet and weigh up to four pounds. Feeding on sponges, algae, and invertebrates. Juveniles act as cleaner fish, removing parasites from grunts, snappers, and moray eels. But one of the most remarkable aspects of this species is their monogamous social structure. Angelfish, such as these gray angels, remain loyal to one mate. Pairing helps them care for their young and defend their territory against competitors. But defending against the black-tipped reef shark is a different story. As a species, sharks date back 450 million years. Black-tipped reef sharks are not giants and are certainly not the prehistoric monster sharks that are believed to have come before them. They are, however, evolutionary works of art, unparalleled hunters ultimate survivors. They are at once beautiful and imposing. For divers, being eye to eye with these ancient hunters is an adrenaline rush like no other. My favorite dive spot will definitely have to be the blue hole. There's a dive they called the playground. Uh, lots of sharks, silver reef sharks, black tip reef sharks. So it's amazing to go down there and to hang on a depth of about 60 feet and then you're having the sharks swim around you all the time until the end of the dive. Here, sharks prowl every part of the reef for fish, stingrays, crustaceans, anything on which they can feed. Razor-sharp senses help them find food. Sounds and vibrations give them their first hint of a possible meal. Superb sight and smell draw them closer to their target. Then their secret weapon a sense organ called ampullae of Lorenzini is what sets them apart. All living things give off a faint electric charge and all sharks have the incredible ability to detect this. So even if they can't see it, smell it, hear it, taste it or touch it, they know where their prey is and can expose its precise location. 
multiple rows of teeth help them devour their prey. Sometimes the hunt is less about sense and more about speed. Black tip reef sharks are known to position themselves deep below large schools of fish near the surface before shooting through the school and into the air like a rocket in the hopes of ending up with a mouthful of fish. Fish, like these horse-eye jacks, named for their large, dark, horse-like eyes. Reaching weights of as much as 55 pounds, these rugged, bony fish can be a substantial meal for top predators. In a school, they are a sight to behold. Like other schooling fish, horse-eye jacks find strength in numbers. If one sees food, they all do. If one sees a predator, they all do. Their colorings are also an advantage. Dark on the top, they blend with the ocean floor. Lighter on the bottom, they blend with the sunlit surface. Horse-high jacks hide in plain sight from predators above and below. But jacks aren't the only schooling fish on the Belize Barrier Reef. The blue tang. Their fins and scales reflect light in boundless shades of blue. Their flat, broad teeth are perfect for nipping algae from the reef. And if a predator happens upon them while they eat, it's in for a nasty surprise. Two sharp spines, one on each side of its tail, stick straight out when the blue tang feels threatened. These spines are sharp enough to slash an adversary. It's no wonder this species is nicknamed the blue barber. Some fish on the reef don't actually look like fish. The sand diver, or lizard fish takes no chances around an inquisitive diver. The lizard fish would also be wise to steer clear of the puffer fish. It may look like an easy meal, but puffer fish carry deadly toxins and have the ability to inflate several times their normal size larger than the mouths of most predators. The tetrodotoxin in pufferfish is 1,200 times more poisonous than cyanide. Some puffers have enough toxins in their bodies to kill 30 adult humans. But divers are more likely to be killed by one of these fish in a restaurant than on a dive. Pufferfish are a delicacy in Japan, specially prepared by licensed chefs to have the toxins removed. From graceful gliders and the sensationally surreal to masters of masquerade and awe-inspiring ancients, the Belize Barrier Reef is a universe unto itself, and one of the many wonders of the great blue wild. Sharks and turtles can be found there. You see the corals and the sea fans and the sponges blowing in the current, and it's just an incredible place to be. You feel very free underwater, and just seeing the movement of everything, feeling weightless underwater while you're diving, and looking at the incredible life that is seen in the waters here in Belize, and it's just thrilling to be out there and be a part of it. Being able to get within inches of nature, it's a wonderful feeling.